We are at NDC Oslo, which is my favorite developer conference, I think, ever. Um, and I'm here with Scott Allen, and we are going to talk about app services, I believe, and magic. No? Maybe magic? magic? Maybe Welcome. magic. Maybe. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Scott. Thank you, Lars. <laughs> NDC Oslo, also my favorite developer conference, yeah. by far. It's, it's an interesting, let's just you know, go off track for a minute, but the atmosphere here, I don't know how they do it, but it's like un, unlike anywhere else, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. The, just the layout, the rooms that you speak in, the crowd, the weather, Oslo in the summer, it's all wonderful. Yeah. No nighttime ever, daylight till September. Yeah, mm. it's all good. Um, so we're going to talk about app services, and yes. I'm almost just going to leave it at that and go, okay, go, Scott. Oh, sure. <laughs> Lately, I've been doing a lot with app services, trying to figure out how to squeeze out performance. So, uh -huh. and just to back up a second, Azure has a bajillion things going on inside of it. But if you have an application that talks over HTTP or HTTPS, app services can host it. And it doesn't matter if it's in .NET or Node.js or Python or Ruby or Java, um, between using containers or using Linux, or using the Windows version of app services, you can find a way to host your stuff in app services and have it yep. be your front end to talk over port 80, port 443, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, I've been looking at ways to maximize the efficiency of an app service. So once you have an application and you deploy it, how do you get the most bang for your dollar or sure. pound yeah. or euro or whatever you're spending on yeah. Azure? I'll, I can definitely expand on that because I see a lot of scenarios where people that use Azure don't quite understand the whole idea of an app service plan and an app service. Yes. And they'll have one app service plan per app service. Yes. And that's not quite how it's meant to be, right? <laughs> that's correct. So in fact, I'm working with a team that's doing the microservice style of architecture. Mm -hmm. And each little team that's doing a service is deploying their own app service on their own app service plan. But the way to think about it is think of your app service plan as a VM. Think of it as yep. defining the characteristics of your machine. Yep. How much CPU power do you want? How much memory do you want? How much storage do you want? Mm -hmm. That's your machine. And then you can put multiple app services on a single app service plan, mm -hmm. just like you would deploy multiple applications to a single server back in the days when we bought our own servers. Yeah, yeah you're yes. not going to go out and buy a new laptop to run another program, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. So let's say you spend $30 a month on an app service plan. Depending on how big your applications are, you could put 5, 10, however, however many app services you want on that one mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. So what have you found? What what you're saying you're looking into optimizing, getting the most you know best bang for your buck. What 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 have you found? <laughs> well, a couple things then about how do you improve the how do you get the most bang for your buck in terms of how many applications can I get onto a single plan and how mm -hmm. can I, you know, reduce the plan size as far as possible without incurring some sort of performance yeah. problems, right? Scalability problems. And and there's some things that are very simple to do, like turning on uh, HTTP2. Um, I think it's on by default now in an app service. Mm -hmm. I would have to check. But um, certainly if you go to deploy your application, you should probably try using HTTP version 2 right, out, right away, right out of the box. There's very few applications or very few scenarios where it doesn't help your performance. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always good. Uh, and another thing to look at is using the Azure CDN service in combination with oh, your app course. service. Because yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. so for, so two things. So if you have a lot of static content and you just want to offload that static content to be served somewhere outside of your app service, mm. the CDN makes that very, very easy and very cost effective. And if you have dynamic content and want to have a little more aggressive caching, mm -hmm. uh, want to have a little better performance because maybe you have app services deployed in different data centers, different regions, yeah. Azure regions. So, you know, I want to put one in Australia for my Australian customers mm -hmm. and one in the United States for my U.S. customers, assuming the application is big enough and my yeah. customer base is big enough. But that's when you can add another Azure service called the Azure Front Door Service, yes. uh, sitting as a proxy in front of your app services. And not only can it send your customers to the, the quick, closest and quickest deployment of your mm -hmm. app service, uh, but it can also do caching for your dynamic stuff. And, yeah. yeah. So you're talking about your know, best bang for your buck, of course. Right. And so the reason that we we obviously have to pay for all these other servers, the front right. door and the CDN and whatever else you put on it, right. is that still a better balance? Because obviously we want the performance, that's fine, but yeah. is that still a better balance cost-wise than upping your app service plan? 
I would say generally yes. I mean, every application is going to be different. Sure. But in general, I found that by leveraging these other services, which are typically a lot cheaper, they're, they're, they're very cost effective. It's usually better than increasing your app service plan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing I suggest people do right away is by default in an app service, in an app service plan, um, by default, there's a, a, a front end in front of your app service plan so that when you scale out to multiple instances, you can think of a proxy sitting in front of uh, all these servers mm -hmm. that by default will add a cookie into the response to a client that is what they call the application request routing cookie, the ARR oh. cookie. Yes. Um, and what that cookie will do is on, when a client comes back to your app service plan, it makes sure it directs you to the same instance, so the exact same machine. And I suggest people try to turn that off as quickly as possible because then, off. yeah, turn it off because. <laughs> um, I'm sitting here going, that's a good idea. And you can turn it off. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you can turn it <laughs> off. You can turn it off because typically that's going to improve um, the way the, the traffic is distributed amongst all the servers that you have. Okay. So that can be a little bit of a benefit too. Yeah. Um, it's only useful if you're building something that is using like an in-memory session because you want a client coming back mm -hmm. to the exact same physical machine or the exact same physical virtual machine, however you want to say that. Yeah. The same <laughs> server instance, right? Um, if their session is in memory, but very few of us write applications with in memory services. Yeah, I was about to say, web in general is not meant to be in memory or stateful, right? right? Yeah, in general, but there's a lot of classic ASP.NET applications and classic ASP applications, I'm sure, that are out there and are being moved into the cloud, and, and yeah. they would need that like that setting to be in place. Yeah, right. So app services is is that the only thing that runs on app service plan? It's a bit of a leading question, because I kind of know the answer, but I'm just wondering how many things have you actually put inside of these app service plans other than just you know app services? Oh, that's true. I mean, Azure Functions would be the other big one. Yep. A lot of people think about Azure Functions being the serverless platform mm -hmm. for Azure, which is true because if you go with what's known as the consumption plan for Azure Functions, yeah. you don't you don't pay to provision an app service plan. No. You know, your code's just going to run on some piece of hardware that's out there. But if you have an app service plan, you can create a function app and say, I want it to run on this plan, which can be effective in a number of scenarios. In fact, um, Microsoft, talking about performance and, and bang for the buck, they just introduced some premium pricing plans for Azure Functions, which mm. are essentially a way for you to dedicate an app service plan to, rush, to run your functions. Yep. And if you ever run into problems with Azure Functions revolving around cold starts, yep. um, that sort of instance, that, that's the scenario the, the premium pricing plans were designed to solve. That was awesome. Thanks, Scott, and uh, thanks for being on the show.